Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Charlie, and welcome to Recipe for Disaster. This is a game that I've had on my radar for a while, but I didn't like how their lose conditions were. Uh, it, it just makes no sense to me that so you lose the game for the certain reasons that they had. So I was hoping that they would change it, and they, they kind of did. Um, this is now free play mode enabled. So we're going to take a look at free play mode and we're going to create our own little restaurant with our own little losing conditions, I guess. Uh, take a look at my avatar really quick. Looking snazzy. All nice. Black. Blue undershirt. Fedora, obviously. All sorts of stuff. We're, we're good here. Uh, and then this game is also kind of nice because you're able to create, uh, sort of customize your uniforms, uh, customize your avatar, of course, and then also create a cookbook that you can use in your restaurant and stuff too. I'm not gonna create anything before we start the game. I'm gonna sort of let this be organic and just sort of let the game go uh, when it comes to cookbooks and stuff uh, because your customers will actually recommend things to you as well, which is kind of cool. Take a look at the uniform editor here then. I've got mine. So I'm gonna be walking around like this with a bow tie, okay? Uh, and then I've got my server uniforms, which look basically exactly the same. Um, You'll see why. Uh, and then the chef uniform is a little bit different, but mostly on theme. So we're not gonna have the big hats and stuff. I'm not really a big fan of the big hats, to be honest. Uh, all right, so that takes care of that. There, you've seen all those things. Now let's go to new game. And I've already done the tutorial. Uh, there's a campaign you can go through. I'm not going to, because, uh, well, it's very, you know, hand-holdy and it restricts you. And it's a, it's a story, but not really. And then there's free play. This is what I want to do. So we're gonna hit this. Now there's easy, medium, and hard. Okay, all those have the losing conditions that I really don't like. So we're gonna go to custom our own rules or create their own rules. So we're gonna start with hard. And then what I wanna do is I'm gonna make some changes. Now, the first thing is the game keeps defaulting to, I think that's euros or maybe pounds. So we're gonna come back over like this, options, just cause it's for me, okay? It's for me. Now, currency is already set to this, but for some reason you have to check it off of this and then put it back on this to actually get it to be dollars when you start the game. That's just the way it is. So if you want it to be dollars, this will fix it for you. New game, free play. We're gonna go to create rules. And we're gonna start with 10,000. And then I'm gonna bring down our popularity to 20. I could have gone hard, but honestly, I think starting medium and just customizing from there is fine anyway too. Uh, so we're gonna start with $10,000. And we're gonna start with a 20% popularity instead of 30. I wanna hit the suburbs and I'm thinking of, uh, we're gonna make our own little steakhouse. So for themes, I'm gonna go with a steakhouse. For our, for our themes, because I eat at steakhouses. I like steakhouses. Steakhouses. Who doesn't like a good steakhouse, honestly? You ever get kicked out of an Applebee's? <laughs> anyway, losing conditions. These are the things I really hate about this game. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to disable these. Uh, so you lose if you have a negative balance at the end of the day. That's it. You're not allowed to have a negative balance ever. Eh. Uh, speaking of ever, negative balance at any time. You ever dip into the red ever for any reason, you lose completely. You're done. Restaurant's over. Come on. Really? Hit any employee breakpoint. Any of your employees snap. Any of your employees just have a nervous breakdown and your entire restaurant loses. Really? No. Uh, an employee is, is fired or quits. Honestly, you should be able to fire your employees if they're not good, right? So we're gonna disable that one too. We're not gonna have losing conditions. This is a fun playthrough. I wanna make a restaurant. And if it fails, it'll be because we lost money and we can't build anything. And it's because nobody's coming to our restaurant, which I don't think that'll happen, but we'll see. All right, so we have all, control of all these settings. I'm gonna leave them pretty much uh, standard for now. So we have patience rate, how patient your customers are for waiting, uh, how frequently will your customers need to use the restrooms. We're just leaving everything normal, medium, whatever, whatever the balance is the game has decided. Customer flow being normal. We could up this if we want like more customers coming through. That will create a lot more stress on our employees because there's more orders. Uh, it also has the potential to backfire on us. Having more people is not necessarily a good thing. Thing if you can't keep up with it uh, and that includes you know bad reviews because they had to wait too long and all that types of stuff so uh, it's not just because you want high customer flow does not mean it's a good thing uh, likewise on the low lower stress lower uh, your better ability to cater to people's needs but you're just flat out gonna have less customers we're gonna leave it at medium anyway uh, I'm trying to anyway there it goes 
customer variety, uh, just medium. Uh, this differentiates how your customer's food preferences will be. Sometimes they'll like certain types of foods more than others, and uh, they might even recommend or suggest or like, hey, do you guys have any of this? And you might overhear that and go, huh, I wonder if we should introduce that. And it might be successful or it might not, but you, you get ideas from your customers. Same thing for the reviews. Uh, for starting employees, we're just gonna leave everything normal. Employees for hire, normal. Salaries, medium. Stress rate, medium. Everything just medium. Uh, we're not gonna have infinite ingredients. We're gonna have to purchase our own ingredients. Um, and if your case, you're, what you're wondering is this, uh, fair dishes markup percentage. Sometimes this can confuse new players. Um, this is basically how tolerant your customers are for the upcharge that you present. So if something costs like $2 to make, um, can you sell it for 10? Well, depends on how, you know, how well willing they are to pay that price. Uh, so if you fair dishes mark up high or hard, uh, you won't be able to mark them up as much. If you go to easy, you'll be able to mark them up more. So um, we're just gonna have this. This is fine. I like this. This is our seed. If you ever want to copy this and be like, look, if you want the same settings, just copy that long string of nonsense and uh, place it in here and you'll have the exact same settings as I do. But there's not that much to do. So it's, you know, whatever. You can, you can copy this if you'd like to. A couple of things. There are world events that will change conditions and make you have to react to them. There are also dynamic events. I don't know what the difference between those two things are. I haven't played that bar. So we'll see. Let's go. So I don't, I don't ask this of every single video, but if you like this, uh, show some love to it, hit that like button, uh, get some comments down below, whatever, engage with it. Uh, it helps the channel grow and it helps the, the series be successful at the very beginning of something. Uh, I don't ask this in every video. I only really bring it up in the first one. So uh, thank you in advance for anyone who decides to try that out and help me out. Okay, so this is how our restaurant is starting. It's this little tiny, really tiny shop on the corner, okay? And that's not good enough. So we're gonna want to expand this, uh, I think, pretty quickly here. Um, so we have some objectives we need to reach. We need to make profits, uh, five-star reviews. We need to get uh, seated tables, etc. So we're gonna look at these objectives and try to hit them, but this is free play mode. And as such, we're not gonna let the game dictate how we do things. We're gonna kind of do things our own way. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I think I'm going to move this uh, bench over here on the side. I'm gonna do the same thing, I think, with little shrubs and stuff. And this, this makes things more appealing. It actually isn't just for looks for you. Uh, it's for looks for your customers and stuff too. They, they like to see these things too. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and move them maybe back in this area, maybe back over here and back over like this. Okay, now I'm just wondering if I can mass select these. Oh, it looks like I can just click it and move it. I couldn't, it wouldn't let me do that with the bench, but it will let me do that now. Okay, maybe that was just a little quirk. Anyway, uh, so what I wanna do, honestly, what I think I wanna do is expand this front part here too, not just the kitchen. The kitchen's getting expanded, absolutely, but uh, I'm wondering if it's just, hmm. Okay, let's go ahead and build a wall. And I kinda do wanna leave a little bit of a grassy area here though, right? So maybe we'll do this little area out front here. We'll go with a wall about like, say, this far out to start out with, maybe maybe here. But the bigger the building, the more maintenance it is. So people are gonna have to cover a longer distance to walk. You're gonna have to have more customers potentially, which is what we want. Uh, but yeah, there's a, lot more to, there's a lot more to do the bigger you get. So I'm gonna put this kitchen probably out about this far. We're gonna have the kitchen be about this far out. Uh, and then we're gonna have the dining room be, I think I could probably just make it this. To start out, I think we can just make it this, okay? All right, so our little hole in the wall restaurant is going to be a lot bigger here. So here we are, it's gonna be this size. Now this is inaccessible at the moment. Uh, also, we're only at 9,800 left here. So we have to keep an eye on our, on our budget too, but uh, this area is inaccessible right now. Also notice I, I said dollars and it still did this. So great. Uh, we're gonna hit this button and this button. That's gonna just open it up. Uh, it's, maybe it looks a little bit messy to you, but this is like a nice little entrance. Welcome to our restaurant. We, we welcome them here and then they can come in here and get seated, right? For now, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, and then we can adjust this to be the front entrance will be over here eventually. If I can do that, I probably can. Yeah, because this is a nicer, a much nicer entrance over here. I think I'd rather have the entrance be here, but we're gonna have to build ourselves that way, so. Uh, so the one thing we could do is we need to paint the walls and let's hide the objectives for now. Uh, so the, for the walls, I think texture wise, you know, I probably want like a, it's a steakhouse kind of thing, a more homely feel. Uh, so maybe these wooden walls would be a good idea. 
let's just take a look and see what that looks like. Yeah, it's like a panel sort of thing. Yeah, it's too dark. And you can change these and interchange. You can interchange these kind of however you want, right? So these things can be, yeah, whatever you want. And it doesn't doesn't cost you anything to do this stuff. So uh, I'm thinking maybe I'm gonna decorate maybe with this. It seems pretty fairly traditional. It's actually already what this is. So I think we'll just run with it. Uh, so this wall could be there, and then uh, we'll have this wall there and this wall there. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, and then we could paint the whole room with alt click instead of uh, shift click. So I just need to remember to do that. Uh, the exterior is a brick wall. I just want to make sure that's the same. It is. So we'll alt click instead. And now the entire exterior is that brick. Uh, now, and for the kitchen, we're going to go with a straight... Uh, we're going to go like this. And actually, I want to uh, change this... No, I kind of like this blue accent wall, to be honest. I think we'll leave that accent wall. Uh, we want to demolish this one. Take away the door first. There we go. All right, so this whole thing is getting bigger. All right, lots and lots more space here. Paint the wall. We're going to go with... Uh, I think I'll just leave that accent wall. Yeah. Go about like that. Okay, so it's white on the inside there. Uh, and then for the floor, it's right here. Uh, for the floor, we're gonna change, is it this one? It is. We're gonna, we're gonna change it to be all this, okay? So this is like the basis, the start of our restaurant, okay? Now I know some of you are not gonna like this. This is gonna get worked out. Again, this is mostly, uh, the front entrance is gonna eventually be here, but I don't wanna spend a ton of money on construction at the time being, or for the time being. Uh, so uh, we're gonna leave it like this for the time being. For the floors out here, I think, uh, I just want to test this out. Eh, you don't particularly like this. Also, floors cost, uh, cost money, turns out. Didn't you know? Grass doesn't, but everything else does. So why don't we decide really quick? This is already a wood grain thing. I think too much wood, probably not, not great. Having just this, yeah. How about we just, can we just leave it simple? I'm okay with simple here. I'm all right with simple. For the time being, I'm okay. Uh, and then this can stay where it is. Okay, so well, let's go ahead and hide the walls here really quick because I just wanted to, to decorate that. So we're looking at a restaurant and this is gonna be our kitchen. Let's go ahead and order some stuff. The kitchen is like the appliances we have and stuff is gonna be very dependent on our menu. So I think before we do any of that, we should take a look at our menu. Currently there are five dishes Sorry, I can count for, for our four dishes that are recommended. And uh, we're going to take a look at those. So bacon frenzy uh, is in here as well. It's a pretty simple dish. We're going to just add all of these, I think, with their default values. But the thing is, the pricing is some like they're pretty high up. Right. And I want to have really good ratings. So I'm actually going to drop the prices a little bit on these before I add them just to really make these uh, like, like really attractive for people to want to get. Um, so we're going to drop this down to like 65 and then bacon frenzy, drop that down to like 28. So we've got these four. They're not that great, but we're going to expand this over time. This is just a starter menu. But one of the things I wanted for that is because it's going to tell us what we need. And so right now it says we're missing dry storage. We're also missing refrigerated storage. We need a grill. Uh, we need, uh, cannot perform boils. We need that deep fries and sears. So we need all sorts of things. So now these little dots are going to appear telling us we need these things. I'm going to splurge a little bit because I want really good stuff. Okay. I want really good stuff. And, uh, it looks to me like they are pretty much the same, but this one here gives you plus one to stove. So this will improve the quality of your dishes. So if you don't have a great cook, this will make them just a little bit better. That's pretty good. So we're going to take a deluxe stove. And we're going to place the deluxe stove, I think, right against this wall here. We need a deluxe grill. I don't need a deluxe grill, but I'm going to have a deluxe grill. I'm going to put it right back here. Now, there is some clipping into the wall. I hope they... Uh... You know what? No, I I'm not going to say I hope they... I'm gonna just move it. Let's just move this over one. I don't like that clipping. Uh, we could take and make a countertop really quick. Which, you know, now that can be made into the wall, which looks a little bit better, I guess. Um, and I think we'll have another countertop on this side too. I don't like how they're not flush with the stove. They are, there's, there's, yeah, they're, they're uh, 
flush of the top here, but this, this is just the way this stove is designed. But that's fine. Okay. Now, those of you who work in the restaurant industry or anything like that, don't cringe at how I organize my kitchen, okay? I don't cook. If you haven't seen the chef playlist, go watch that too. Uh, that was really fun. I, I really like that series. Uh, but it'll also give you a very good look at what I think of cooking in kitchens. Okay. Uh, going on that note, putting a deep fryer here at the front too. Uh, so this is going to be my arrangement and how people are going to cook. I know it's like, why are, why is everything right next to each other? It's good, probably going to get reorganized. Moving things later is free. Okay. It is. Uh, now I'm going to get a big fridge. I'm going to big old double door fridge. Okay. Uh, we're going to place that. Uh, I think, yeah, like right about maybe like right in the back here like this. Yeah. Big old double door fridge, because the bigger your fridge, the bigger your storage, the more ingredients you can store, and therefore the more likely you are to be able to handle a rush and things like that. Uh, because you do have to order ingredients, and they do not appear instantly. They have to get delivered to you. So if you're not ready for it and you run out of stuff, you won't be able to satisfy customer needs. Uh, what else should we have back here? Do we have some more countertops? Maybe like one more. Uh, actually, you know, having a store a dry this is for dry storage which is probably really needed um not sure where though probably dry storage they put it over here or kind of like the idea of having it here but now it's getting a little close and i also don't have a door here yet i want a door to uh, like a back door to enter the kitchen so uh i'm thinking a dry storage could be right here and maybe we'll put another one right here that's okay uh, I was hoping for, yeah, something else here. Uh, how about we have a fire extinguisher right next to the grill area? We could put one back here, I guess, because this is close enough to the grill. We'll also put another one over here because fires can can happen. I suspect they will happen. So uh, I'm going to guard against that with having multiple fire extinguishers. Um, and then I think that's all I need for now back here. Um, we are going to need a door. And I'm actually at a loss here as to where the doors are located. Door, right here. Okay, uh, so we're gonna need a door and we're gonna place the uh, solid door one way, two way, sorry. Maybe in the back here like this. So they can get in and out of the kitchen, like a back door to the kitchen, right? I think that's a good idea. Okay, and then I think you can make these staff only, I think. Um, I'm gonna have to look at that and see. I also maybe misclicked this when I was painting the floor. I'm not sure when that happened. Uh, this is probably not the right one. Is that just there? I didn't do that, I guess. I don't think I did that. Yeah, I can't actually do that. Like I can't, I can't manipulate that. So that's just part of the game. Okay, good stuff. All right, so that's gonna take care of our kitchen. All right, I think our staff should be pretty effective with that. Next, let's take a look at the dining room real quick. Uh, we're gonna go to furniture and I do want some classy stuff. I think this fancy wooden table, everything you put in the dining room, everything you put anywhere really, they have modifiers. So this has an ambience modifier. Uh, typically if it's just a common one and there's it's zero, it's neutral. But if you get one that's a little more fancy, a little more expensive, then it ups that ambience, the, the modifier for ambience in a radius of two. So this is gonna have a modification or modifier for this. And that's the radius that it will happen to this little thing. So uh, I'm gonna say that we want a seat to be here. We'll have another one uh, here and then we can have like a potted plant or something on this side. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get another one, let's say uh, here and here. Seems good. Uh, can I have a bigger table? A secondhand table, nice. Negative two to ambience, we don't want this. So I can't have like a really big table. So the only way to do it would be to uh, perhaps make a booth. Uh, we could make booth seats as well, which has a little bit of a modifier. So maybe we'll take some booth seats and we'll go maybe on, on the back side. we can go, uh, maybe we can even do it over here, honestly. Have a booth along the, along the back wall here like this. I don't know, what do you think? It'd be all right. Uh, all right, it wouldn't let me place the booths and I was trying to figure out why and I just sort of cut it, but um, it's because I think it needs a table first. So I'm gonna place tables along the wall here. And actually this is uh, not 
not enough here. We'll have to move it here like this, and then maybe we'll move that here like this. There we go. All right, so now it should let me place the booths. Yeah, so it has. To, you have to already have a table set up for this. So there we go. We got some booths along the back side here, right? That's pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and duplicate you, and we'll get you there and there. So this will be our dining room for, for the time being. I think it's pretty good. We want chairs that add to the ambience as well. We've got some fancy chairs here, uh, fancy crossback chairs. These seem cool. We'll go ahead and place these in like this. And it doesn't let you place chairs unless there's a table for it to be placed at, which is kind of cool. All right, so there's our dining room. I maybe overspent a little bit, but I think it looks okay for now. And uh, what we want here is something that decor. We want decorations and stuff, right, too. Now, we have some Christmas stuff here. It's kind of the holiday season, right? We're starting this, this series off at the holiday season. So, you know, why don't we have a big old fireplace in here? That's kind of cool. Big old fireplace right here adds ambience to the whole room. Everybody will love it. I think it's great. Oh, yeah, there it is. See? Got stockings up there and everything. I like it. Put a little wreath next to it here. Let's say. No? Won't let me? Why not? Can't do that. Huh. Oh. Does it have to go? No, it definitely doesn't have to go above the door. Maybe it's not allowed to go so close to another de big decoration. Put it all over on this side. Yeah, I guess it. I guess it can go over here. Okay. Um, we'll have a Christmas tree. Ooh, how about in the main entrance here? Yeah, yeah. You walk in the main entrance. Hi, how are you? Welcome to our restaurant. Here's a Christmas tree. <laughs> all right, this is now a Christmas themed. We have a Christmas themed uh, steakhouse. This is us. This is what it's come to. Um, I'm going to place the television in here, too. This is overkill. Uh, we don't need this kind of thing, but I'm going to do it anyway. Now, there is one thing we are going to need here that I don't have yet, and uh, that is bathrooms. We have $4,300 left. That is not a lot of money, so I'm kind of overspending here really quick. But uh, I think before I get really crazy on the bathrooms, let's make sure we have food. So I'm going to say food storage, and uh, it's going to tell me all the things that I have to have. Uh, so all these little areas that are red, these are things that, well, it's, there it goes. It's not, it's kind of glitching. These are all the things that I need in my restaurant in order to make what I have uh, on my menu. I also have uh, how much dry storage capacity I have and how much refrigerated storage capacity I have, as well as the time it's going to take until the next delivery, which is the start of the day. It'll be one hour away. So. Uh, let's go down the list and just get a good supp a supply of everything that we need for this. So we're going to get some brown onion. Now, this is not the amount we're ordering. This is the desired amount we want to keep in storage. So we don't want to go too overkill on this stuff because it's going to continuously buy things until we reach that. Uh, and it may occupy too much of our storage if we're not careful. And then we're just going to need more storage. So we'll get some chili powder here. Let's get some corn like this. Uh, let's get uh, a little bit of egg. I don't know how much we're actually going to use. So we'll just do five. Um, let's go ahead with garlic. We have a dish that takes garlic and it's fairly cheap. We're promoting it. So there's that. Um, ground beef. It's going to take up refrigerated storage. So let's get like at least 10 of that. Um, we'll get some honey here as well. Maybe I just get 10 of everything. I think I might be able to handle 10 of everything for now. Um, because some of the stuff gets stored in dry storage and other stuff gets, you know, Stored in refrigeration, so we'll see how well how well we can handle everything for the time being. So let's just scroll down everything that's red, and we're just gonna make it ten. Now you might be wondering, can you just type in these fields? No, uh, unfortunately, we are still living in the age of clicking buttons repetitively and not giving PC players text input. Still living in that age. Uh, maybe that'll change in the future. I really hope it does. Smoked bacon. We're up to 70% of our storage. This is actually pretty good. We got good storage. I like it. Uh, I think we're going to be fine. Go 10 here and 10 here. And that's it. That's all the things that we need for the items that are on our menu. Okay. And we have a little bit of capacity here to add things to our menu. So that's good. We're not, we're not filling up our stores, uh, our stocks. I like that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and have all of this be what's ordered in the next uh, thing. And that's going to cost us. Um, going to cost us money. I don't know how much it costs us. <laughs> it probably costs us quite a bit, but hopefully we have enough money for the bathrooms. So let's go back to walls. And I'm just going to take and add 
something like... I think for now, I'm gonna go something like this. It's just a little tiny... Yeah, just a little thing, right? Uh, and then we'll have a solid door. These are kitchen doors. Maybe I should replace these doors with kitchen doors. I think I will. This is a, this is a kitchen door. Oh, I need to remove this door frame first. The door frame gone. And then do a kitchen door here. There we go. And then this is the back kitchen door. Ah, there is a door dedicated for this. I should just use it. There we go. Back kitchen door. Cool. Um, so over here, then we're going to use the solid door. Place it here. Okay. Now, what we need here are a couple of bathroom stalls along the side here. So uh, I'm going to go with restrooms. And we have stall doors. And we have toilets and stuff. So let's go ahead and do... None of these are good for ambience. Like, the bathrooms are always bad. So, um, we're just going to say here... Uh, I think we can do this. I think. I want to say that that's possible. Uh, we could build walls between them. Like so. Right? Uh, and then we do stall doors. So, we have the stall door... Uh, oh, hang on. Not letting me. Hey. Hey there. You want to... Cooperate with me? No? Don't want to? Huh. Doesn't want to cooperate. Why? Why game? Oh, you know what? It's probably this. Hang on. I bet you I need to have a solid wall here already. I bet you I have to pay for the wall and then the door goes over top of it. There it is. Okay. So there, there, and there. So these are stalls. They can go in and do their thing. Um, we're going to paint the floor. Just this basic, real basic marble. I'm sorry, you said basic? Yeah, well, marble is cheap. Same cost as wood. I don't know. I don't make the rules. Uh, for the for the walls, let's go ahead and get our walls to be up. There we go. Uh, we want to see... This is, let's go ahead and make this our brick wall again. There we go. And then inside... I think just the, the plain wall is good, right? Just plain white here. Doesn't need to be anything fancy, I don't think. Uh, we're going to place a sink in here. And that's going to go right here. Those two. Okay. So there's two sinks. And I think that's kind of all we need. But I can help the ambience in here by adding new lighting, which I need to do in the dining room anyway. So let's take uh, ceiling fluorescent light gives you five ambience. That's pretty sweet. These fancy wall lights. The chandelier is only 120 bucks. Just put a chandelier in here. It, you know, it kind of looks Christmassy, sort of. They're like little balls, like little ornaments, sort of. I don't know. Let's put a chandelier right above here. It's a, it's an ambience in six radius. So if I do it like here, it looks like I could just put it down the middle here. One, two, three, and then one, two, three, four. I, I think this actually covers everything. If I do the chandelier here and here, I think I just went ahead and covered all the seats that i'm not sure we can also do wall lighting but i i actually plan on uh having like pictures and stuff up above here and little flower boxes and stuff here are kind of nice too so we can also do things on the tables and uh we can do that by i think there was uh where is it decorations oh suggested objects I don't, I don't know where that is. I wanted something that goes on the table. Like napkin holders. Here we go. Napkin holders are important, right? We'll just put one there, 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 there. You don't want people making messes. You have to feel good about eating here. Yeah. All right. There's that. And then uh, we have the wreath, which is cool. And the television, which is cool. We put Christmas lights all on the top here. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> we might as well just live in the spirit, baby. There it is. Uh, and then the final thing I want to do is I want to have... Oh, I don't want the flower boxes. Those are, those are just a big no. Although, I could do it along this. Yeah. Something like that could be cool, I guess. We, we, can, we can make that work. Only 2400 left. I kind of feel like we should open the business and see how we do on money, right? Before we add any more decorations. What do you think? Should we just open it up and see? 
let's uh, let's give it a shot. We have a little bit of extra money to react in case we need something, right? Um, so let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna hit this button at the top. It says open. That will create our save game, and we're good to go. Now we're immediately gonna see some icons. I'm gonna pause it. Immediately we see some icons. Right now we're at a $211 loss, and this is our well. This is since the last hour. This is our wages. So we're got a lot of employees and stuff, right? So what we need to do here is in the uh, in the lobby, not in the lobby, I guess. This is the dining room. Yes, I got it. Inside the dining room, we have to assign these tables to our servers, okay? So I'm going to let the game run just for a little bit of time here. And when everybody's arrived, looks like we have, th this is us. Okay, there's only four. Let's go ahead and pause it. Okay, first thing I want to do, I want to introduce you to Charlie, because I haven't actually talked about what my guy is like yet. So Charlie is not somebody who cooks. Hi, I don't actually cook, okay? But just because I don't cook doesn't mean I can't run a restaurant, okay? So I am going to be a more personable guy. I'm the upfront guy. I'm good at serving. I've got a little bit of charisma. I clean up the place. I make people feel welcome, okay? I have the trait of genius which allows me to level up faster. And I have a trait of, in, of inspiring, uh, an inspiration for others resulting in a reduction of stress for nearby employees. I'm the guy that's sort of trying to hold everybody together and assigning things while making customers feel great. That's me. Also, speaking of great, this is a potential customer for us in the future. I can guarantee it. Look at her. Look at this. Ah, uh, uh, the rest of you doesn't match the hat, but good for you. Good for you. We also have a black, it's like a Christmas hat. Yeah, a little black Christmas hat. So yeah, yeah. all right, we are festive in here. This is nice. Uh, so anyway, that's me, but all of the employees have their own traits and stuff as well. Before we get into this, I'm gonna go to the staff screen. We're gonna meet our staff. But the other thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure everybody has the right, uh, what do you call it? The, the right uniforms for the job, right? So let's take a look and see what people are good at. It looks to me like we actually have two really good servers. So we're gonna be very good on serving, but I think some of these servers are gonna end up working other things. Like for example, Julia is also pretty good with the oven. She really hates the grill, so we're not gonna assign her to the grill. Uh, she's great at cleaning. We're gonna have her being cleaning. She's also inspiring. That's cool. Um, yeah, I'm digging that. That's great. Um, now we can actually, that's actually somebody to hire. Oh, that was a new staff member. Um, hang on. Okay, these are people to hire, my bad. These are who we have and these are who are available. Good, let's meet who we have first, see what our gaps are. So um, we'll just go down the list, I guess. Hi, Charlie, here he is, okay. Um, I already introduced you to that. Jody Simmons. So Jody's got a two across the board. She has something that she really likes, which in this case is uh, cutting, like the cutting board, right, countertop. She really likes the countertop. We can look at it over here too. Um, but she doesn't like the fryer. So we don't want to assign her to the fryer. She's also a carnivore. She loves meat and gains a bonus to quality when cooking meat ingredients. Very good. Uh, we want her on the grill and the oven. Absolutely. So you are going to be a cook. We're going to assign you there. So we're going to go into Jody, and we want to assign her a uniform. We'll go to the uniform editor. We have these three uniforms, right? We showed those off already. Um, so what I'd like to do is assign a group. So we're gonna have two groups. One is gonna be uh, kitchen. And we'll just assign this to color. Let's actually let's keep, let's keep it red, it's fine. And the kitchen is gonna have Charlie's chef, All right? Save the group. And what we can do is take Jody and put her in the kitchen group. And that assigns her the uniform. Pretty cool, right? Another group is gonna be, uh, let's say uh, dining. We'll just like dining room, right? Let's make this like a like a lighter blue color, and we'll assign this to be Charlie's server, okay? And we're gonna take anyone who's a server into here. Now this person, Tony, take a look at the next one. Tony really likes serving. That's good. She's gonna be she's gonna be smarter when she does that. She's not really a big fan of, or not very good at charisma, but she's not like against it. What she doesn't like is a stove. She's okay at cleaning too. I think this might be a good candidate for a server because she really likes serving. So, and she's a genius, she's gonna level up faster as well. I like this. So Tony is gonna go in the dining group and that assigns her to the uniform for the dining group. And then um, 
I might change this too to give her a tie and stuff. And then the next thing is Nessa. Nessa loves the fryer, which is great because our other kitchen staff hates it. So I guess we have a good fryer now. This one is also connected. She receives a discount on ordered ingredients. I think these things stack. So if you have a lot of connected people, I think that works. I don't know that. She's also very good at cleaning. We can keep our kitchen clean. I like this. She doesn't like countertop stuff, which is okay because this person loves countertop stuff. Oh, I love it. It worked out really well. Good. So Nessa, you're going in the kitchen. So we got two people in the kitchen, one person in the dining room staff, and then there's the default group, which is going to get renamed to just Charlie. Okay. And then my label color, whatever, I'll leave it pink, but Charlie is going to be Charlie. All right, so I get to keep my uniform. I already had that. We have the kitchen staff here and we have dining here, okay? That's our staff. Now we can add more if we need to, but adding staff is adding additional complexity. It's gonna add to our wages, all that kinds of stuff. So let's keep our crew skeleton for the time being, okay? So the next thing, we need to get rid of all these icons. What, is these, what do all these things mean? Well, you have to assign staff to work various different things, and they'll take priority based on a sequence of one, two, and three. Let me show you what that means. So for now, we have Tony. She's the blue group, right? And this is our dining group. Kind of wish I could move this group uh, to be over in this area. Can I move these groups? Can I take the dining group and... Oh, I want the dining group to be up here. I'm going to swap this because I, I want myself to be next to the dining group. So I'm just going to go dining really quick, make this modification... Uh, go server. Yes. This group here will be the kitchen. I didn't know how, what order they were going to appear at the top. And then chef. There we go. And then I want to just take Tony, put her in here. And then everybody who's not Tony goes in here. Yes. Okay. And then when I go like this, I should see Tony's next to me. Okay. So this is going to tell me, you know, I'm in the server group or I'm serving, but I want a different uniform. So here we go. We got our staff with our uniforms. Pretty cool, huh? Let's go ahead and hide all the walls. Okay. So for serving, all right, when customers come in, they're going to sit at a table. What do we want to do, right? Well, I think I want to have our main server, right? We're going to assign a character to this table. And I'm gonna have Charlie assigned to this table, this table, and this table, all right? I'm also gonna have you be here and here. All right, these are your primary tables. These five are your primary tables. These four are gonna be Tony's primary tables. We're gonna assign Tony to these four tables, okay? Now, what happens if Tony's getting overloaded? She can't quite make it, but these tables have openings. What's Charlie gonna do? Stand around and pick his nose? No, not not really. So what we can do is we can assign multiple people to the tables. So right now she's first. She's gonna take it first. But if you're overloaded, we're gonna have Charlie take care of that. Okay. So we're gonna do that for these these tables here. Okay. We can assign those individually like that. And then over here, if Charlie's getting overloaded for some reason, we can have Tony help out on that. So Tony will be here. Now there's a quicker way to do this, of course, as many are gonna point out, and that is to duplicate the settings of the table. And then you can just paste them in like that, okay? And what, happen what happens is every table now has those settings, okay? So that's taking care of that. Now for the kitchen, we wanna have people who like frying need to be here. And it's really convenient because you can see the people who hate it here. So on the fryer, we want Nessa. She loves the fryer, so we're gonna put her there. We know that Tony doesn't particularly like it, um, but she has two skill in it. She's a server, so we don't want her to be in here. But if she has to, for some reason, we want Tony to come in and fill that gap, if we can. For the countertop, we know that Jody loves it. So in you go. And we don't want her to disregard either, so we're gonna go like normal on that. Um, for the second position on this, uh, we can place uh, Tony on this as well. If you have to come and help out, you should, okay? But we're not gonna, ho hopefully you don't have to, but if you have to, you should. For the deluxe stove, pretty much nobody's good at stoves. Um, so we're gonna have Nessa hit, hit the stove. On the grill, everybody's, ooh. Uh, Jody is 
yeah, Jody can hit the uh, the grill here too. Uh, and then finally, we've got Jody on this countertop as well, and we'll have you be a normal effort. Uh, I think actually this one could be disregard. So you'll use this one first, and then maybe. Uh, no, I want I want your good effort. So if I tell them to put like less effort into something, they'll go slower with it, and I don't really want that. But they have a stress count, right? They've got stamina, they've got stress they're building up, and if they're putting too much effort and they have too many jobs, they'll get too stressed out. All right, speaking of having too many jobs, that takes care of all those jobs. There's one more thing I want to assign, and that is that we have to assign cleaning zones. Yeah, yikes. So clean areas. We're going to have a new cleaning area. It's going to be the kitchen. And we're going to have Nessa and Jody take care of cleaning their kitchen. Okay, keep that kitchen spotless, all right? If anything is 75% or less on the cleaning scale, clean it, all right? So we're gonna allow a 75% tolerance on that. The next zone is gonna be the bathrooms. We definitely want people cleaning the bathrooms. Charlie's gonna take the, the lead on that to alleviate some of the work that Tony's doing in here, if possible, so we'll do that. And then likewise, we're gonna also have another zone where we take and clean all of this. And this is gonna be Charlie's responsibility as well, along with Tony secondary. In this zone, because it's a very small zone, but it's also high foot traffic. I'm gonna put Tony as the as the lead here. And I'm also gonna stick Nessa here too, um, because she's got really high cleaning skills. She should be able to do it quicker. And it's also close to the kitchen. Okay, that's it. We've set up everything we need to start our day. I know it took a long time, 43 minutes in this video to get here, but we're here and we're fully set up. We got $2,200 left. So let's run time and start seeing how our customers are. So these, this guy's gonna seat himself. He's gonna go in wherever he wants to go. And right away, he's going to uh, start, you know, look at the menu, get himself organized. Tony's gonna take his order, gonna put it into the kitchen and then the kitchen needs to go ahead and get to work. We got our, del our ingredients delivered. That's nice. Looks like our staff are just gonna hang out out here until they have to do something. Yeah. So right away, kitchen staff goes to work and does what they need to do. Customers start f uh, flowing in. Sometimes your staff can perform exceptional while doing a job, which will increase the quality of what they've done. Sometimes they, do, they have a flop. The better their skill, the more likeliness it goes one way or the other, right? Depending on their skill. Looks like the people are really ordering the smoked bacon that huh smoked bacon maybe we need to have a little bit more of that uh so let's go to meat and we want to come down to smoked bacon it says we have seven stored i think that's i think we can ignore that because we're we're keeping a low supply anyway maybe we'll up this to 12 just to give a little extra because if we have somebody ordering something more than other things and that's something we need to look at right all right we got a five star review on this now remember our prices are lower than what the default was I lowered my prices in hopes that I could, you know, give people a little bit better of an impression of our business. We want people to come on in and uh, and like what they see, like like what their experience is. Speaking of their experience, I'm gonna let it run at one time speed. Down here on the right side, we have our average rating, and we're gonna see ratings here. So Daniel Butler gave us a five star rating. That's awesome. Bacon Frenzy was cheap. They are generous here. This place is squeaky clean. Oh, you're the first customer, so I'd hope so. Over here, we have our objectives. We can flat that out again, and we're looking to get five-star reviews, right? Um, so Tony's performing very poorly while cooking. Hang on, why is Tony... Tony should be serving, not cooking. Um, I know this is your secondary, but I'm actually thinking maybe you have a two skill, but you have a lot to do. I'm gonna pull you off of this. You have a lot to do out here. Um, I'd like you to focus that out there if you can. If I need to bring in somebody for the kitchen, then I will. What's this? My staff is going, hey, excuse me. Why? Uh, charisma, select an employee charisma skill. Uh, hi. What's... Oh, I see that. So I actually did not know what the charisma skill does. I had no idea what it does because none of this happened when I was trying to test it out. So this is the first time I'm seeing what this is. 
So charisma skill is how you handle employees and how you talk, I guess, okay? Jody Simmons says, my cat is really sick. Any chance you could help out with the vet bills? 200 should cover it. All right, you know what? Like, I don't want to start, you know, I don't want to start off on the wrong foot with my employees here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm not really short on cash. I mean, I, I am a little bit concerned, but I'm not sure. I'm going to help you out with this. Maybe they can, you know, maybe they can like me. I avoided catastrophe. Golden ribs quality decreased while deep frying because Tony performed poorly. Yeah. It is what it is. Okay. So now we have this wonderful restaurant. We got people using the bathrooms. Things are going to get dirty. But we're only going to really react to that when we have to. Now, it looks to me so far today we're profitable, which is nice. And as long as we keep our ratings up, uh, we can keep charging the prices we're charging. As our ratings drop, we have to drop our prices too. That's a problem. So let's take a look here. Nicholas Stone. Uh, Tony served me incredibly fast. Nice. Julie Salazar. Uh, had an average price, probably because the Golden Rooms were lower quality on that mess up. That might be what the case is. We'll take. We'll keep an eye on that. Um, bacon frenzy was cheap, so people are they're liking the bacon frenzy. It's a good price for it. We'll keep it open. As long as people are happy and leaving us high ratings, more people will come, and we should be profitable. But if we start getting bad ratings, and it can snowball, we have to address the issues. We have to address exactly why. We need to do it quickly. So these two people left us three star ratings. That's interesting. Let's take a look at this. Maybe we have, maybe they have to leave before. Oh, right here, Ross Robertson. Tony was rude. Hmm. Tony was rude. Let's see, she's under a little bit of stress, but I mean, it could just be a fluke. <laughs> and then both of those ratings came up the people that were at the exact same table, so. Maybe Tony was just rude. She's too serving, but poor charisma. We need to we need to do something about that, huh? When she levels up, maybe we'll we'll get there, huh? Gain 10 more XP to advance to the next level. Now we have thoughts for each of our employees as well. So Tony, Charlie's so inspiring. Nice. So thoughts, um, this will reduce stress or raise stress. So if the team is too small, she's feeling pressure, it will raise her stress, but then other factors can lower it. I, she loves serving. She's in a position she loves that reduces stress. Um, also, I'm going to reduce stress because I'm very inspiring. There you go. Now, one last thing. Um, oh, what's this? I actually don't know what this is either. What's going on here? Um, it's green. We have a new request. Okay, so this is something we're going to take a look at too. So sometimes your customers can request things. This person says that they wish they had fried pork loin. I hate everything in this menu. This place looks amazing. So they love what I've done with the place, but they don't like what I'm serving. They've recommended fried pork loin. So what we could do is we can add that recipe. And it's very easy to do that by just simply clicking this button. And it's been added to the menu. Now we can go ahead and edit it. And you can see a breakdown of how menus, how the menu works and how creating new dishes works. Now, again, I am not a chef myself. I'm not, I'm really not. Like I don't understand certain ingredients and flavors and how certain things mix. I, I don't have that type of understanding. So I'm not gonna be very good at creating dishes. However, if any of you have ideas on what we could add to our steakhouse, I am definitely open to in recipes being introduced from the chat. If you have that kind of experience totally open to that. For now, we are going to have a deep fry, pork loin, and then it gets out and plated and that's it. This is all it is. Um, we have fryer skills. It's fried. That's a tag. We don't have any allergens to worry about and it costs us $1.75 to make it. it. takes about three minutes to cook. So I can go ahead and save that. Now when I save that, um, I can go into my menu and fried pork loin is here. It is automatically added to our menu at a price of $6. If it's taking a look at some other things we have here, I'm thinking our ratings are going to drop here. So I'm going to have to drop the prices on everything. I'm pretty sure I am. So we're going to drop the prices like way down, like $49.25. Let's keep this. Let's keep this under $20. Majestic T-Bone. I think we're going to keep this one. Uh, I'm going to put this at like 20, 21, 22. 
uh, Bacon Frenzy. They're, they're, they're thinking this is cheap, but that's only cheap because our rating is high. With our rating dropping, because uh, we didn't have, we started with a five star rating. So uh, as people start, you know, talking about us and giving us lower ratings, this is this average is dropping, right? So um, they're not going to be okay with this for long. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say probably like 40 bucks for this one, maybe 39.95. Um, for the fried pork loin, it costs us a dollar 75 to make. I'm gonna bump this to like say 14 bucks. Yeah, yeah. No, that's too high. I think we we bring this down to like eight, maybe maybe eight. Now we could add more stuff to this too. If it's just fried pork loin then like it's real basic, right? I mean, it's super basic. So we can add other things to this too. And like I said, if you have any ideas or recommendations on how I can improve certain dishes or how what I can add to things, I can edit these recipes at any time. So leave those to me if you'd like to. Uh, I'm totally open to like a crowdsource menu from you guys. Uh, okay, so we've added that to the menu now, it's great. Take a look at our food storage. Since we've added fried pork loin to our menu we do not have any pork loin to cook so we can't make it we can't serve it so i'm gonna take and we're just gonna add i think 10 of these maybe maybe 11 of these to the the storage and then hopefully we'll be able to buy those and serve those as we go okay looks like we're still not getting everything oh it's because it hasn't been it hasn't been delivered yet we have to wait for the delivery all right so there we go, guys. We're uh, we're all set up and ready to rock. Delivery of uh, the ingredients is done. Uh, we got seated tables increased to one. I got a trophy for that, I guess. Uh, so we need to make profits, of course, and we also need to seat tables. There it is, and have we need to have five five star reviews, which we do not have yet. We're down to three stars now, actually, which is a little bit depressing. Just a little bit depressing. Um, Tony was rude. Tony was rude. So everybody's thinking Tony is rude. And it's probably because her charisma is shit. So um, I think I probably need to get her doing other things. Um, even though she loves serving and she's okay at serving, she's not very charismatic. And that's a problem. So I, it looks like I have to do something about that. So Tony, I'm gonna have you take, uh, just take some time and hit to the kitchen instead. I'm gonna remove you from these uh, popular tables and let this be uh, let this be a Charlie area instead. Yeah, so we're gonna move Charlie here. Uh, we're gonna move Charlie to this spot. We're just gonna do the same thing. Let's just take this setting. We're gonna pull Tony off of serving for for now until she gets her charisma up. And we're gonna have her maybe maybe she can focus a bit more on cleaning. That's an okay thing too. Um, let's take a look at our cleaning zones, and um, we'll shift Tony. To clean a little bit instead um we can leave charlie to do basically all of the yeah we'll leave charlie to do all of uh the serving for now like primarily the serving and stuff now because this charisma is higher and he has inspiration so hopefully that will help us we'll see tony's being rude to people i don't like it we have a new request on our menu uh so this menu lacks dishes that i like i wish they had fried sweet pork ribs probably serve me quickly okay so we could try that too um we can add this little little vegetable action a little kiwi action on this looks like it takes four dollars and thirty cents to create this we'll, we'll go ahead and save that go back to the menu here real quick and um it takes four dollars 15 it seems to be like an okay price i think that's an okay price but we need to have some kiwi as well and so um we need to have it says discard but i don't want to discard kiwi no, 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 no. I want to have more kiwi. Here we go. Yeah. We're going to have uh, this, and I'm going to have pay 0% surplus to have it delivered immediately instead of receiving it the next day. Hey, cool. Awesome. Confirm. <laughs> there it is. Okay, cool. Uh, so does that actually work? Because I have never tried that before. Kiwi set to 10. Yep. Okay, cool. So now we have it on our menu. So hopefully we need to see also we have uh, a little bit of stress a little bit of stamina how is Tony doing a little bit of stress I mean they're okay they don't really need their rests um, they automatically will go rest once they have 40% uh, on the stamina and so far that's okay 
if it becomes like really busy and we're having a hard time keeping up with that we can lower it um, that would increase stress but they do have uh, a good amount of like leeway there too so i could even i could even lower this to like 30 percent for uh for people right just to see how that goes 25 for tony now 30. yep and then charlie same thing i think we're gonna bring you to 30. charlie's actually a more, more stressed out well, you know, it's business owners. You know how it goes. <laughs> oh, Charlie is sad, guys. Look, Charlie is sad. Why is he sad? It's the end of the day, of course. No, he's actually sad because there are empty tables. It means less money. It also means our team is too small. So I think the general consensus for everybody is that our team is too small. Uh, so it's really encouraging me to um, get another staff member, which you know, like, I'm not really that profitable today, so I'm a little bit eh on that. But a lot of the negatives that we had, um, with the exception of, like, the new fried sweet port ribs being disgusting, yeah, uh, we're serving pretty quickly, but, like, we're getting stressed out as well, and we're losing stamina and stuff, too. Uh, so, like, we have people resting a lot. So, yeah, the team is a little bit small, and, yeah, I wish. So we're gonna look at that, and if we can't make things really delicious, we should probably take it off the menu. Just because one customer wanted it, doesn't mean we should necessarily have it. Because if we have it on the menu, people might order it that otherwise would have ordered something else. You know what I mean? So if I can't make something well, probably shouldn't make it at all, because uh, it gives a bad impression. Uh, that being said though, Charlie's, well, team's too small. And uh, yeah, we, we need to do something about this. So I think, before we get into the next day, I am gonna take a look at expanding our team. And I do think that it's probably a good idea to take on one additional cook and probably one additional server if we can. So Jasmine is great on the fryer, also decent with the oven and the stove. She hates the countertop. I need somebody that's like doesn't hate I, I need, for some for the kitchen, I need someone who doesn't hate kitchen things, right? So all of these guys, they hate kitchen things, but they're good on serving and they like serving. Um, very good on cleaning. Also proactive. Cool, we'll serve random tables if idling. I like that. Um, we have, they're just bad on charisma though. So like they might serve, but maybe they're rude. I don't know, man, it's gonna take, it's gonna take some time here. Um, but I think maybe, maybe this person, she loves cleaning. Great serving, decent charisma. She's connected, we get discounts. Maybe this is where we wanna go. I do like proactive and having two additional servers would be kinda nice. Charlie's skills are really bad in the skin the kitchen. This is as true to life from me as I could possibly be right here. Uh, so uh, yeah, I don't want him in the kitchen. I, I don't want him in the kitchen at all. So if I'm gonna take somebody else on, I need to take somebody who is gonna be good in the kitchen. I, it, it's, somebody that's going to compliment my weaknesses. Somebody's gonna be good at my weaknesses. So um, why don't we take Jasmine, because she's pretty good on this. Connected, getting us a discount, I like it. Her hiring fee is this, and she takes 1461 as a salary. And it's pretty much the same as Julia, and uh, Marie is incredibly cheap. Her salary, like she is very cheap. Um, so this could be somebody to take on as well, but uh, she's also not very good. So that's, that's another thing to consider, is that she's not very good either. Um, I need somebody that's good. I need somebody who's going to serve well and have really great charisma. So we're going to hire uh, Jasmine to start here. And uh, Jasmine's going to join our serving team, I think. So let's go to uh, staff. Jasmine is now here. We're going to move her into the dining staff. There we go. Um, and we're going to assign her to the tables that we had before. Uh, where is she? We need Jasmine. Here she's four, obviously. The one that's really good at serving. That's the one. Um, so we'll have Charlie as a secondary on this. Um, but we're going to go ahead and copy these settings to these tables. Uh, yeah, so we'll give her these five, and then Charlie will have these four. Charlie also has a lot of cleaning tasks, and um, Jasmine doesn't yet, but Jasmine actually really likes cleaning. So we could give her the cleaning stuff, the cleaning stuff as well, because Tony is getting really hit by... Um, by the other tasks that she's doing. Uh, she's getting, her stamina is always pretty low, so. Okay, so we took on an additional server and that's gonna help out a lot. Um, if they offer me an additional cook for tomorrow, that would be great too. So we're gonna take a look at that, but that is gonna be next time. So we ended the day down $130, not great, 
might need to adjust some things, maybe adjust our dishes, adjust our prices, whatever that is. Um, a lot of our negative reviews today had to do with people being rude. Um, so Tony was rude, that was a negative review. I guess the sweet ribs was, yeah. Charlie was rude. I was apparently stressed out at some point, so I guess. And people are gonna say that we're rude all the time. Like, you can't really prevent customers thinking that you're, if you've never been a server before, uh, I'm not gonna recommend you do it just to get the experience of it, but I will say that you need to be nice, okay? Be understanding, be nice, and, un and do understand that that is not actually as easy of a job as you think it is, okay? And people who are quote unquote rude might just be like, you might just be like their hundredth customer of that day and they're just kind of tired, all right? It could it could be a thing, all right? They're human beings, all right? Um, menu lacks dishes that I like, eh, whatever. Uh, disgusting, disgusting. Had to wait a long time. Uh, wish they had stuff on the menu. And like, come on, give negative review just because you wish I had something? That sucks. In any case, there you go. Expenses, that was really big, but what we're really looking at here is we wanna see whether or not tomorrow, because we're not doing any more renovations. So tomorrow, are we profitable? Don't know. We have all these different staff. We can see uh, Jasmine didn't do anything, so she was idle all day. But we can kinda see how people performed, right? What kinds of things did they do? that day, um, you know, how much did they, how did they spend their time, right? They spent 9% of the time tired, 10% of the time tired, right? A little bit of time idle, right? That's kind of a little bit of a break kind of thing. Um, Charlie spent 22% of his time idle. That, that checks out. Yep, that's pretty much how it works. <laughs> but my average stamina was 42% because I spent a lot of time serving and cleaning, you know? So yeah, I, I, did, my, I did my job, okay? I did my job. Dishes, sweet ribs. 33% of my total revenue, okay? So these are good, Bacon Frenzy was good. I want to adjust my menu and make it better. So if you have ideas, I am totally open to it. I hope you'll share them with me. Here we are, start of day two, and that's gonna be video two. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. I really hope you will come back for the next one. Thanks, bye-bye.